Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have with us our second guest, and we're having a conversation on a lighter note. So for those of you who have once in your while, you know, once in your lifetime thought of going into business, or who think business is not for you, Oyinlola Adekogbe might just be able to convince you differently. She's the founder of Jedi and Co Accessory Store, who recently launched out and started their shoe line in 2018. She's joining us today, and we're looking at entrepreneurship and empowerment. Thank you for joining us, Oyinlola. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Thank you. So you've had an accessory line for a while. Uh, and yes. you decided to veer off into shoes. Were you not afraid that there are already too many people doing shoes? Why did you decide to start that? Okay, so I was already in retail for a while before I started my shoe line. And then it came as, a, as um, for the request. You know, I was getting requests from people asking, oh, I want to have this shoe, but I want mm. it in lower heels. I want mm. it in studier heels. Mm. Oh, I want it in 43. I want it in 46. So I found out that, yeah, there are so many shoes in the market, but most of them are streamlined. We have 38 to 41. Mm. People who wear 36, 37, 45, 44, people who have really wide feet can't find the right pair of shoes. And that was why we started our shoe line. Mm. Okay. So I'm happy you mentioned um, the big feet women yes. and the really small size feet yes. women. Now, some people have always known that, yes, they have this issue. But when clients come to you, um, what are the things you look out for even when they put up orders? Um, concerning shoes to you? Okay, so the first concern that we have, we found that, that many women don't even know what their shoe sizes are. So they don't know that even your shoe size changes from time to time due to things like pregnancy, weight gain, weight loss. So they just have it at the back of them and say, I wear 41. And then we try 41 and it doesn't fit. Mm. So then we have to start educating them because we are mostly online at the moment and say, oh, you have to measure your feet again. Your feet might be wider. Your shoe, your shoe size could have changed over time. So we have to personalize our, you know, our, our services to our customers to make sure that they know what they want and they can find the perfect pair of shoes. Many people say that you know, not everybody is called to be in business. We hear people say, no, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. So what were you doing before you decided to go into entrepreneurship? Or was that always part of the grand plan for you? Okay, so I started as a hobby, initially just buying and selling. And then I found a problem. And it was just something that was, I was very eager to solve. I had a nine to five up until August of last year. So I'd already started doing this business on the side. I'd made a lot of losses. I'd made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that was when we rebranded. And at the time I was living my nine to five, I was certain I had gotten my, you know, my, my problems and I knew the solutions I was going to offer. So I think entrepreneurship is a journey. Nobody starts out really convinced saying, oh yes, I know it. But if you are determined, you know, to solve a problem, you would learn a, a, along the line. And that's, that's how it's been. You left me. your 9 to 5 August last year. Yes, I did. When you look back, do you have any regrets? I don't. I think I left at the perfect time. I don't have regrets that I should have left earlier. And I know that the time I left was just perfect. Because I already had something on ground. I had, a, you know, a business. I had something I was doing. And I could pay myself at the point in time when I left. So it was just the perfect time. Okay, so now you, you make your own shoes, like you have a factory for it, or how is it done? Yes, so we have manufacturing partners. We actually outsource locally and internationally. Okay. So we have our own you know, procedures, we have our own standards, and we make sure that they meet the standards. Okay. Yes. We're starting to see lots of shoe brands bringing up in Nigeria. And unfortunately, one of the things that many businesses have complained about is that the cost of manufacturing in Nigeria is pretty expensive. So would you say that that's one challenge you face? And if yes, what are the other challenges you face? The cost of manufacturing locally is pretty expensive. So you find that even when we say we're manufacturing locally, many times we're importing all the raw materials and we're just assembling in Nigeria. So really we have to find a way around it and find what the most cost-effective way is for your business. If you want to do strictly made in Nigeria, you should be able to pass on that value to your customers and make them pay for it. But if it's in the markets where they are not really understanding that value, then you might have to find alternatives. You know, so manufacturing really is, is a huge concern for people like us in, in the business. Also, other, biz other challenges that we find is marketing. You just wake up in the morning, you're a full-time entrepreneur. You, you go from having a steady job with a steady role to becoming social media manager, accountant, you know, model. Sometimes you have to wear your shoes yourself, wear your mm. dresses yourself. So you just find out that you're multitasking. You're doing everything. Everything. You have, you have become your PR manager. You're sending DMs to everybody that you know can wear your shoes, wear your accessories, and make them get out to your target market. So I think that's the greatest challenge for an entrepreneur, having to become everything. 
at the same time. Okay, so talking about challenges, we're talking about Jedi and Co, and it's sounding like a very beautiful story. But now, knowing how our Nigerian mentality is, I've seen people actually be presented um, made in Nigerian shoes, and they go, very nice, wow, really great. And they get it, some manage to wear it for the first time. After that, they don't do, they don't wear it anymore. Now, have you ever, you know, had it as a challenge for people to accept your brand as a Nigerian brand, you telling them this is a made in Nigeria shoe, made in Nigeria brand, and it's actually quality. You should get this. It's affordable. Have there been challenges in you doing that? Okay, so for us, because we actually source locally and internationally, we have something for everyone. We have made in Nigeria. We have made in you know, big countries abroad. So we just size up the customer. We understand what the customer wants, and then we offer you that. Mm. So... Yes, we've had challenges, even just selling the Nigerian brand to some people. Some people prefer international brands. But then I think many Nigerians are beginning to open to the fact that, oh, let's, let's give it a shot. Oh, yes. yes. I'm one of them. I'm proudly Nigerian. You know, so, so we have people who say, mm, let me just buy one pair and see. And then after a while, they just become believers and they just keep spreading the word. So it's been challenging, but it's been worth it. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I want to refer back to what you said about having to be a multitasker, doing everything yourself, social media manager, um, P, PA, PR official, the officer, and then, you know, <laughs> modeling your shoes. How would you say social media has impacted your business? Social media has been amazing, really, for us, because we started basically online. Though presently, we are still majorly an online store, but we have an offline office. We find that 98% of our um, our sales comes from social media and even the two percent has some kind of social media influence so they find us online but because some people are not just you know sure that they want it then they come to our physical store and see it and usually they come just once and they never come again so the coming was just to ascertain that this is a real legit and are not business scamming. and that we are not scams and after that they just send money and they just so social media has had a huge huge influence on our markets. I think the first thing anybody who wants to go into business should do now is to start with social media. Mm. Mm. Brilliant. Because many people don't understand. We underestimate the importance of social media, which is why I asked you that question. It's very important that you understand that your target audience is waiting for you on social media. Your market is there. Mm. If you had to give advice to somebody who was switching career paths, you know, navigating from doing their nine to five to finally pursuing their passion in business, what would you say to them? Give it time and start small. So there are so many advantages starting as a 9-to-5-er. You have funds, you have a salary, you have incentives that you can always put into the business. You can afford to take losses at that point in time. Mm. And then you give your business one year, two years to grow. You know, it, it won't be the same time for everyone, but you've tried it out. You've seen what works, what doesn't work. You are not having to run around to raise every little money that you need. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be keep the 9-to-5. Start it as a side hustle, grow it, and when the time is right, you would know. And mm. then you just take the dive. Keep your nine to five. Start it as a side hustle. When the time is right, you will know. Thank you so much for joining us and Thank sharing you your so story. Much. But I'm, I'm tempted just a little bit to ask you to share some of your social media marketing tips and tricks with us. Maybe one or two. What would you say has been the one thing that has worked for you the most on social media? Because every time we have conversations like this, we aim to learn and to also help other people in business as well. So the one thing that has worked for me is just be relatable on social media. Let people be able to relate with you. They don't want you to be a robot beyond, behind the scene. You know? So mm -hmm. once in a while, even as a brand, you have to put a face to the brand and come and say, hi, my name is Oyi. This is what I do. This is why I do what I do. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. You don't see me, but you do this, you do that. And I think at that time, the, you know, we get a lot of traffic. People say, oh, hi. And then when they come into the DM to shop, they come and they say, oh, hi, oh, you know, like they feel like they know who is behind, yeah. behind the brand. And that always helps. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. We've come to the end of today's show. For to enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.